All right. <laughs> All right. This is what we look like. Welcome. Welcome to, back. <laughs> welcome to the Bear Burrito Podcast. We're gonna, we're gonna need to not look at the camera. Though. Yeah. yeah this is weird. gonna get weird. Okay, yeah, so we just need to act like we're talking with each other. Yeah, but you're leaning out of camera. Oh. Yeah, for real. For now. real now. Okay. okay. Yes. Everything's still going. Fun. Okay. All right, guys. Welcome. Welcome. What's up? Hey. Stop looking at the camera. I can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. it it's looking help. at me. <laughs> it doesn't it's, help that you're directly in front of It's looking right at me. I, I wish we couldn't see ourselves. You know, yeah. we did our best bet anyway. So they'll get a little snippet. Yeah. Out of okay. Us. Let's let's start. Let's do this opener again. Ready? All right. Okay. Hello. 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 <laughs> What's up? <laughs> All right. Good to see you guys again. Good to All see right. you guys. Good to Another be here. Another episode of Bear Burrito Podcast. Bear Last Burrito. time we talked about spooky campfire stories, yep. and yes. this time we're going to talk about regular old stories. Regular old stories. Yeah, regular old Sweet. stories, which seems like a step down, but we're going to make it a step up. Yes. All right. For sure. We're going to also be well, talking. Go ahead. Because what I so leading up to that scary stories podcast, I've been listening to tons of scary podcasts. Of course. Oh, like yes. of course. So yes. like Dirtbag Diaries, like every October they do like a tale of terror type thing or mm-hmm. whatever. And I noticed on some of most of their episodes, honestly, it was just stories that were really scary. Right. And like a humongous mountain lion following a woman for two hours oh you know stuff yeah. like that and that sounds pretty creepy or like there. or like your bear story you know yeah like that stuff's really creepy in itself and so those moments almost terrified me more and so i think that these stories whether they're scary um just like crazy or whatever else could right. be equally as like intense yes I agree. So we're going to be, like Nick said, talking about intense, maybe character building, maybe. We're going to be talking about interesting outdoors experiences with a theme of what is the mentality of an outdoors person. I was going to say outdoorsman, but I meant outdoors person. Outdoors 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 man, outdoors woman, outdoors people of all kinds. Yes. There you go. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today is, um, you know, what state of mind do we take into the outdoors and how does that state of mind affect how we react in certain situations that we've been in and that kind of deal. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, you know, that's the general theme. We can go ahead and get started. Sweet. Yeah. All right. Cool. Thank you. You guys have any stories already on your mind? Um, well, maybe we should start with, so you're going on an outdoor trip. Okay. What are you thinking? What's your mentality? Mm-hmm. That's a great, it's a great place to start. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you're going on an outdoor trip. You know, what, what's the mentality you want to bring into this? Because we know there's a lot of people that want to get into the outdoors, but they feel like they're not experienced enough. Yeah. They feel like it's dangerous, you know. And, you know, of course, you're, it's inherently risky. Right. You're going outside. Yeah. You know, you're responsible for yourself. And, you know, what happens to you is your responsibility. You yeah. know, and that's not a way that we're used to living. Right. So I think that, that, honestly, right there is one of the biggest things that you have to take into it is I'm taking personal responsibility for my own well-being and myself. And, you know, if I need something, it's not just a phone call away. If I get right. hurt, it's not just a 911 call away. You know, if I need help, it's not just calling the police into there. You know, it's not just relying on the globalization, the interconnectedness of everyday life. You can't rely on that when you're outside. It's mm-hmm. just you and God. You know, it's just you, the people around you, and God. And that's it. And so that's, I think, the first thing that you have to do when you're preparing yourself to go on an outdoor trip is be prepared to take that responsibility yeah. of I'm responsible for myself, my actions, and what happens to me out there, and I can't think that it's somebody else's. Yeah, but also, like what you said, if you plan well and you do it well, yeah. it can overall be a comfortable experience, you know? Oh, for sure. Like, yeah. I'd, I've had the bulk of my camping experience to be, you know, not too miserable, you know? I've cozy had a good time. Cozy, cozy yeah. times, yeah. Cozy time. Very yeah. pleasant. For sure, for sure. And that, but that's, again, like you're taking the responsibility for that. Right. You're, you're taking the bull by the horns. You're saying, sure. I'm going to have a cozy time. Exactly. Outside. You know, nobody else is going to make the cozy time for me. I'm not going to check into a hotel and they've already made the coziness. Yes. I'm bringing the cozy with me. You know? True. I'm planning for that. And and so you take that responsibility. You pack the gear that you need to bring. You plan the food, plan the meal prep mm-hmm. that you need to have, you know? You, you take yeah. all that into consideration. You've already scoped out the campsite. You know where you're supposed to be going. Right. And you know, like, you we're just going to have a chill time. Yeah. And you're bringing the specific people you want to spend time around. That's right. true. You know? Well, something that took me a lot of time to realize is, like, I'm a very fly-by-the-seat-of-my-pants, very spontaneous type sure. of guy. You know, like, if you guys 
called me tomorrow and was like, hey, dude, like, we're going camping overnight tomorrow. I'll be like, let's do it. Yeah. You know, or tonight, it's like, hey, like, let's just go camping tonight. I was like, all right, let's do a night climb. All right. You know, we do that stuff really quickly at times. But I've started to notice that really, I mean, a lot, the, some of the most fun times I've had were the most planned out times mm-hmm. as well. Because there's almost like, there's a lot of freedom within structure, you know, if you really think yes. about it. Yes. Like within good structure gives you a That's lot true. of freedom to do things. Because if you know, like, okay, we have this planned out, we have this gear, we have all these things, now I know 100% that we can go do this. Yes. Mm -hmm. And just have tons of fun without anybody feeling anxiety about it. Right. You know, like, we're so prepared, we're really good, we know what we're doing, let's go for it. You know, it was like when we were going in the cave leading all those students across, like, that river inside the cave. Right. Like, that was one of those moments where I'm sitting there like, should we do this, Keegan? (laughs) (laughs) And I was like, should we? And you're like... Yeah, I think we should. <laughs> so, but we right. like did test yeah. walking across it ourselves. Yeah, we weighed the risks. Yeah, we weighed yeah. the risks. We, weighed the we risks. set up a rope. Yes. Like we, we, brought a rope we brought a rope because we anticipated there might be a situation where this might be a yeah. safety concern and we have rope for that, you know, situation. That's true. So. I'm sure you all didn't plan for there to be a river in there. So I think that's No. <laughs> that's a good yeah. thing to be a versatile right. person, a versatile leader to be prepared for almost anything even though yeah. mother nature might have other plans for you. I think that's another key mentality that you have to bring into the woods and that's flexibility Mm -hmm. you know it's being able to you know you can only plan for so much because you know we talk about planning a lot on this show and we talk about you know how you have to bring that that planning mentality and load in the front end so you can get the most on the back end but you know it is a mix of spontaneity flexibility and that planner mentality because you know nothing ever goes to plan you know like mike Mm heisen says everybody's got a plan until you get punched in the face (laughs) yeah sometimes you know nature punches you in the face and yep. your plan's out the window, and you have to deal with it. Like, we were on a canoe trip for Canoe Kentucky, and the very first day, our cooler went down the river and over a waterfall, and they had our yeah. lunch in it. And it's like, well, how do you, what do you, what do you do in that situation? How do you plan for that? Well, we still had a great time. You know, we still had a fun time, yeah. and we actually, 24 hours later, found the cooler nice. on the other side of the waterfall. Nice. It was in a tree. Oh, <laughs> and awesome. ended up having lunch anyway, so, you know, I don't know. The universe conspired itself to mm-hmm. our good, positive vibes. Right. Yes. Brought the cooler back to yeah. us. You, you guys know? didn't freak out. No, we didn't freak out. You know, it was actually, we all had a good laugh about it. <laughs> but um, you have to be flexible. You got to be flexible out there because you're not in ideal conditions and things are going to happen that you don't plan for and you got to adapt mm-hmm. to it. So being able to be versatile, adaptable, flexible, super important for sure. For sure. Yeah, I was uh, one of the, I think one of the wildest moments that I think my trip leaders planned out like so my undergrad in order to graduate you had to take either this outdoor backpacking class or you had to take like a week long like sit inside of a class class right and i was like well i'm going uh, backpacking yeah <laughs> sounds way more fun but it was super hard and i think the trip leaders expected like they definitely expected us to screw up they expected us to not consider everybody in the pack right. they considered us to make all these mistakes but none of us considered any of that was going to happen at times Mm-hmm. And one of the, probably the scariest moments was, or maybe like, maybe like the saddest moment for all of us was after a rock climb day, this girl already had a hurt foot coming mm-hmm. into the trip and then her foot started hurting even more. And right after the rock climbing trip, we had to go straight up the side of the hill, mm-hmm. you know, straight up the side of this mountain essentially. And it was really, really rough and she couldn't do it. All the guys, like, there's probably 10 of us in this group, and she was, like, the only girl other than one of the group leaders, right. being a woman. And so she's, like, one of the only only women there, and I'm back with the other group leaders and her, and I'm just like, oh, my gosh, like, are you okay? Because she's limping hard. And yeah. all the other guys had, like, went flying up this hill. Of course. And everything. Yeah. <laughs> and they are all just having a good time, running up the hill. And all of a sudden, my troop, my troop leaders are like, hey, like, where are the other guys at? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> like, they just kind of yeah. took off. And one of them comes back down and is like, hey, what's going on? Right. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to make fun of him like that, but he's like, what's going on? <laughs> I hate the fact that he might be listening to this. <laughs> like, what a jerk. Yeah. But no, he was like, hey, what's going on? I was like, oh, she hurt her foot. And he's like, all right, I'll run back up and tell the guys right. and everything. And uh, so one of the group leaders comes up. He's like, hey, where's he going? And I'm like, oh, I guess he's going to tell the other guys that she's hurting. He's like, why didn't he just stay with you and carry her up? And I'm like, oh, I'm an idiot. Why, why didn't I think of that? 
But I at least had some good graces because I was still there. Right. right. <laughs> you know? Right. And so, like, pretty much the group leader is like, carried her up this hill yeah like putting her on their shoulders and everything got her up halfway up the like side of the hill and finally all the guys come running back down like halfway right and they're like oh sorry we were putting our stuff up that way we could all like carry her and not have like weight and he just like chewed into these guys right about being Mm -hmm. like i don't care how much weight you have like you're carrying her like you're not leaving her behind like you guys could have at least talked to us and planned this out and maybe like that would have been a good idea yeah but, like, that was just ridiculous to, like, leave all of us behind without telling anything to any of us. Just, like, laid into him. And I'm sitting behind him being like, I'm so glad I stayed behind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm so glad I stayed back. But it was, but right after that moment, all of us started really considering each other after that. Yeah, like, sure. we were super tight family after that, though. Right. And we were constantly looking after each other, always wondering how each other's doing. And, yeah, yeah way, way better after that. So you say you guys weren't, like, being mindful of each other until that moment? Correct. Interesting. Or, like, you weren't, you were acting, it seems like they acted first and thought second. Yeah. Well, I think, I'll give them the credit that I think they, I believe that they were somewhat thinking whenever they figured out she was hurt. They're like, oh, we'll take all of our stuff up real quick and run down and then run back up. Right. Right. But they did, just didn't have that mindset of communication. They didn't have the mindset of, sure. no, that actually might wear us right. out more right. to run up and down like this. First plan we get, execute it. Don't yes. think about any other plans. Immediately send it. Yeah. Right. And, you know, like we, you know, working with at challenge courses and with small groups, that actually happens a ton. Oh, yeah. Where it's like very first plan somebody has, all right, let's do it. You know, let's send it. We right, want to yeah. do this right now, right away. Let's complete this thing. As fast surely as possible. Surely it's easy. Yeah. yeah, surely it's easy. Let's do it quick. And then it just doesn't work at all. falls apart. You know, mm-hmm. and it's not until, and even when you tell them explicitly, like, I know you've done this too, and I do, it's like, you have five minutes to plan. Right. <laughs> take this time to plan. You explicitly will tell them that, and they'll be like, no, nah, we got it. Yeah. <laughs> we have 30 <laughs> seconds and then wait around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they just, they just go for it. And I think that that is not just, that's everyone. That's all of yeah. us. You know, we, like, we want to problem solve, and we don't, we think that problems are easier than they are until we get into them. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. we think that things will go exactly how we think they should in our heads. So, like, first plan we have, let's do it. We got it. Yeah. And then it doesn't work, you know. So how can that translate into a mentality that people should have when they're out there? That's a good question. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, just taking, I think something I've realized not only in situations where you're outdoors, but also just in friendships or relationships, like with my wife, mm-hmm. I think, like, the number one thing I realize is communication. Mm-hmm. But not just communication. There's also, like, empathy. Right. And there's some of these other basic skills that I don't think people realize should be basic to them. Yeah. You know, I think we grew up in a society sometimes where we don't learn empathy very well. I think we don't consider each other's feelings that often or learn how or even consider our own feelings that much. You know, because the key would have been for those guys and myself to think, okay, how is she feeling in this moment? Like, what's going on in her mind? Yeah. What is she thinking? And how can I, you know, react to how she is? Instead, all of us were like, well, how, like, what are we thinking? Like, let's do this now. Like, what do we think is the best? Or even how do we solve the problem as quickly as possible? Right. And then they just ran off to do that. Yeah. And, you know, like, I can relate because I'm very much of that mentality is I'm very pragmatic and not so empathetic. And, you know, my wife is super empathetic and less pragmatic. And so I'm always like, problem, let's solve it, you know? And then I try to do that, but too often that's not the solution and the solution yeah. is only revealed through empathetic thought you yeah. know and so like those guys taking off and leaving that girl all of a sudden she feels abandoned you know and now she's not right. going to feel helped even if they come back later it's not going to have the same impact yes. as if they had stayed you know yeah and mm-hmm. so if they had thought for a second instead of immediately the most pragmatic solution let's go run up here really fast drop her stuff and come back if they had stopped and been like you know at least consider the empathetic thought you know, how is she feeling? She's feeling like she needs help, so let's help right now. Right. That might have been the best solution, and that's not obvious when you're not in that mindset. Yeah. You know, I yeah. think there's a balance, though. You know, you I think so. Because you know. even if they would have just been very pragmatic and yeah. thought, but had the communication aspect of it. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, you don't have to be like an expert in empathy. Sure. You know, to make right. a situation work well. If all they would have thought and we would have thought of is, okay, let's communicate about our pragmatic idea, 
that would have changed everything. Let us too. know where you're running. Yeah, 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 let us know where you're running yeah. to. Let us tell you, like, hey, we think this is like the right. best solution for right. us to help you the best. Yeah. Are you okay with that? Right. And if she would have been like, yeah, that's great, then it's like yeah. awesome. Yeah. You know? And yeah, she might have still felt, man, I'm slowing everything yeah. down. She would have still felt all those things regardless, but at least the pragmatism would have been communicated. Right. And so even that, that's why I think communication is key. For yeah. sure. And I feel like as a leader, having that mentality of thinking about everyone in your group, you know, yeah. if they were thinking about the whole mission as a whole instead of just their one idea and yeah. how it affects the whole team, maybe they would have thought about that even earlier. For sure. Yeah. I, you know, I agree. As those le- leader has to set the tone for the group. For sure. And also I'd like to make the point, too, that problems don't happen in a vacuum. And so, like, this girl feeling like she's slowing down the group and feeling like the group is abandoning her, that's not an isolated incident that's going to go away when the problem is solved. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's something that can affect the rest of the trip and her performance for the rest of the trip. So it's not something where the pragmatic solution can just fix everything, you know, because problems don't happen in a vacuum. They have continuing effects, you know, as the trip goes on. So it's something where when, you can, when you're in that problem, you gotta, you got to think of the long-term solution, not just the short-term one. Yeah. You know? And I like what you said, how through this challenging and stressful event afterwards, you said you all worked a lot better. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So crazy, crazy how that happens, <laughs> yeah. right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, but, what's, but what's the funniest part is that those team leaders expect that to happen. Exactly. Yeah. Like, they know that at some point, everyone's going to mess up. Yeah. <laughs> People yes. aren't going to consider someone. And after that moment, that's when the trip gets awesome. Right. You know, sure. That's when the trip flows really well. Everyone's talking right. Right. Like, and they're just struggling through those first like couple of days yeah. or however long it takes. Well, that's what we always are talking about here is how adversity, yeah, builds character mm-hmm. and it's brings kind of us whole together. Yeah. That's the whole thing. Like yeah. that's what we're programmed to do is come together in the midst of adversity. And um, what was I going to say about this? Um, a key mentality for that too is that the, your group was able to be resilient mm. and yes. come back together yeah. afterwards and say, "We messed up." let's do better. Yeah. You know, imagine the mentality of not being resilient. We messed up. Let's carry that forward to the rest of the right. trip, you know, yeah. and that would ruin, ruin yeah. the trip. Right. And so we got to be willing when we go into the wilderness to know that mistakes are going to be made. Things aren't going to mm-hmm. go according to plan. We got to be flexible. But we also be resilient, being able yeah. to get it back up, yes. try again, find solutions, keep trying, you know, all those things because attitude is everything. The trip is going to either going to be great you know, we could have the exact same trip, me and you. The exact same trip, and you might think it's great, and I might think it's terrible. Right. And it's all just because of the attitude that we had during mm-hmm. it, you know. So, have that resilient spirit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I think the resiliency was key, for sure. Yeah. And I think that, because up to that moment, we also didn't know each other that well. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, and after the moment, we knew each other super well. For sure. And, but it takes that resilient attitude. And in those moments of crisis, like, it really shows who each other are as yeah. well. You know, really, you get to see who you, each person in the group is. So, like, you got to see, like, like my team leader showed me, like, well, you seem to be this, like, in the back of the pack leader. You know, you don't yeah. lead by example, necess- or you don't lead by, like, pulling everyone along. Like, you kind of lead by sitting back and comforting people. Yeah. You know, and making sure everyone's, yeah. like, moving along. Slowly directing them yeah, in the right way. Helping yeah, helping out. If someone's, like, too far ahead, I'm, like, kind of in the middle to make sure that this person knows, like, where yeah. we're going. Mm-hmm. Little things like that. And But at the same time, they were able to tell me, but you need to also be someone who can pull people along. Right. Like, yeah, you're mm-hmm. sitting in the back like that, but you need to have a voice for the people in the back. Yeah. Right. You know, you can't just be selfishly sitting back there with them. Right. Like, you have to voice it. And then the people who are pulling from the front, you know, with that resiliency comes being able to teach you, okay, you're great at pulling people from the front. You can make people do whatever you want. You know, even if they feel like maybe they should go back. Right. You know, but with that level of like i don't know what you would call it with that level of um inspiration you know to draw people forward you need to understand like that you even more than anyone need to have the ability to consider the people in the back yeah you know like little things like that you start to learn through resiliency um i think it and that's why we call it a skill 
Yeah. It's not just, yeah. you know, a char- it's not just a trait or a personality trait. Like, it's a yeah. skill. It's something that you train. Yeah, you're not going to go out there your first time and immediately get everything right. Yeah. Correct, yeah. Because I can already see people listening to this and be like, oh, just be resilient. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Good like, luck. Okay, oh, th- thanks. Luck I'm cured. That. You know, yeah. it's kind of like, but, well, and to those people, I would say, yeah, you're going to suck at it at first. Yeah. You know, it's going to be hard. But like anything, it's a skill. You know, you suck at piano the first time you try it. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. sucking at something is the first step to being sort of good at something, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And so, you know, you guys got to keep trying. Keep trying to have the attitude. You know, I don't, I hate the phrase fake it till you make it. But I, don't, I wouldn't say fake it. I would say try it until you mm-hmm. make it. Yeah. You know, it's try okay. to be resilient sure. until you are resilient. Because mm-hmm. it's a skill. Just like anything. You try to shoot basketballs until you're good at basketballs. You don't fake shooting basketballs, you know, so I hate when people say that. Yeah. Try it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Try it until you're good at it. Yeah. But. Yeah, because, I mean, if I am, like, if I'm building that tabletop out there, right? you know, I made a ton of mistakes making that tabletop because I just kind of went gung-ho into yeah. it. Right. You know, I was like, oh, I cut this board too short. Oh, I cut this board too long. <laughs> like, that table shrunk in, like, in width <laughs> yes. because of all that. Yeah. It, like, shrunk in width because of how many mistakes I was making. And I was just like, oh, like, I was getting so mad at it. <laughs> but now, like, I've learned all these skills. Like, right, and, yeah. And I've got the skill of being resilient. Yeah. Of keeping you know, pace with it all and keeping going. And now when I go to make a new tabletop, yeah. right. I'll have way more things that I can do with it now. I can yeah. make it look way nicer. It's not going to be all lumpy. I don't know. I think it already looks pretty I think nice. It looks great. <laughs> yeah. I think it looks good too. It looks well, thank you. My, but, my but question yeah. would be though, is like, how do you train resiliency? Because we said, okay, be resilient. If you, somebody would be like, mm-hmm. okay, how? And I say, okay, train yourself to be resilient. Then they would say, okay, but how? You know? Right. So what, what are some things that people can do to train that resiliency yeah. skill? I'd say challenging yourself. Boom. Honestly, yeah. I mean, exactly like like we for. said, that yeah. challenge yeah. that they had of trying to help out the entire group, help out someone yeah. that is injured and maybe struggling a little bit. I mean, that's the challenge. That's yeah. added stress. You know, how are we going to get this person out of here safely and yeah. comfortably? Yeah. But that's work. That's with anything, you know. Working out, you know, you, st- you stress yourself to get better. Yeah. Same thing in the outdoors with leadership. You're going to go out and try to lead these people over and over and over again and hopefully you learn what works best with you and yeah. learn, what's, learn what works best in every situation and those stressful times is really what's going to make you grow the most yeah. that is the answer i was looking for man it's what going you... into the yellow zone yeah it's pushing into the yellow zone every day well mikey you've like so you've done the adventure leadership right. stuff and you've just done stuff on your own before too sure. with friends and everything else so what was a moment that really like stood that out for you right I mean, there's so many, honestly. Just yeah. being, not only like choosing to go in these situations, but being thrust in those as well. That's true. Because um, they find you sometimes. It's true. It's yeah. true. I mean, I can remember the time of uh, whenever we were in the Grand Canyon and we were, I think it was the end of our, it was either our hardest hiking day or our second hardest hiking day or something like that. We had gone like at least 10 miles. Is that the day that Ellie was leading us? Um, that was, I think that was the day after. It was the day we had to go get water. Oh, so down we in the can, yes. get water, so yes. you're going to die. Exactly. Yes. So there we go. We were in a thrust situation where <laughs> literally had no water. Yes. Um, yes. How are we going to solve this problem? Empty on water, yeah. in the desert. Pretty yeah. stressful. Very bad, very bad situation. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we figured out a solution. Well, we, tell, tell, tell them what happened. Yeah. Like, what was so, the... What, we were hiking for a long time, and I think at the beginning of the day, we had all of our drum bags full of water, and yeah. so we were carrying a lot of weight throughout the entire day, Yeah. and halfway through, we just we knew we had a lot longer to go, mm-hmm. and it was just too heavy to carry that the entire way. And we saw on the map that there was supposed to be a water right. source. Right, where we were going to be close to a river, supposedly. Up. Yeah, so we emptied our drum bags. Yeah, so we emptied yeah. out the drum bags and continued our journey, and we were... It's getting close to the end of the day. The sun is sort of starting to set. Yeah. And we're all super tired. We finally make it to like the very entrance to where a campsite's going to be. It's like up on this little bit of a plateau and we're kind of in this little valley. And so at this point we're like, all right, we need a plan because we need to cook dinner. We definitely don't have enough water to cook dinner and have drinking water. Yeah. So we need to find it somehow. And I think... One the of our, spring was yeah, dried up. The spring that we so thought was there. What we thought we were going to get water from, it was all dried up. Yeah. And oh, man. at this point, we were realizing that we were actually like legitimately starting to be in danger. Yeah. Because we were a whole day's hike from our last water source, you know. Oh, and um, 
and you know if we there's only one way out you right. know <laughs> we yeah, had to yeah. keep going forward if we were gonna make yeah. our hit time. in this situation we definitely can't just sit down like okay well maybe things will get better later because they right. they wouldn't we had to take action somehow yeah um so i think one of our group leaders had scouted out that there were some potholes down down the valley and uh for those that don't know it's just what it's what you think it is a tiny little hole in the ground that has collected rainwater. Yeah. You know, runoff that's just super gross. <laughs> it, was, it was stagnant. It yeah, was just like stuff floating stagnant. around in there and uh-huh. growing. And... But uh, it was it was like a mile yeah. straight down the slot canyon. Yeah, straight down the slot yeah. canyon. And uh, it was the water we had too. Yeah, it was the water we found. So so we had to hike down there and and fill up everyone. Every bags. single water, <laughs> every oh single thing, water container we had. And then hike back yeah. up. Because there was, what, three of us? Yes. At and then first four. There was three of at us. first, there was three of yes. us. And we each had all of our backpacks full of water. I'd say. Easily 90 pounds. Yeah, it's so heavy. Easily. My, 90 the seams of my backpack were ripping. It yeah. was not supposed to hold that much. Oh, easily, yeah. easily 90 pounds of water in everybody's backpack. And then we have to huck those up this slot canyon. That's, I mean, I some parts. So, yeah, some parts are a little boulder <laughs> problems, honestly, yeah, trying to get up there. It was. So. I mean, just work again, working in a small team there, trying yeah. to transport these backpacks without without getting injured. Honestly, that was our, the biggest thing that we were was worried a huge about. Worry. Just twisting an ankle with that heavy of a pack. I remember setting a timer on my watch for yes. like two minute increments, and I'd be like, "We're gonna walk for two minutes," and then we walk for two minutes, and we would drop pack and just rest because it's yeah. so yeah. heavy. Because it was so heavy and such was rugged so, terrain. Yeah, yeah, it was so rugged, but you know like Micah said like that was a challenge where you just had to be resilient because True. failure wasn't an option and feeling sorry for yourself wasn't an option yeah, it right. was like formally formulate a plan and execute it and, and overcome it yeah and I think that we did seriously come out the other side stronger for, for it sure. because when we walked into that camp with the water it felt like a oh, superhero so <laughs> good so good <laughs> Everybody yeah. was like, oh! Just immediately drop your pack yeah. and just fall to the ground yeah everybody was wow. cheering because we had brought life right. <laughs> back to the camp gross life but oh, disgusting life <laughs> but it was life nonetheless yeah. life in the form of bacteria yeah. did you, yeah. in the water did you use bleach we uh so we we, we used everything we everything. had yeah. <laughs> we boiled it we we strained it through we strained it yeah oh that's smart and then yeah we also put i think aquamira is what yeah. we had aquamira straining yeah. boiling we did everything. Yeah. <laughs> Although I will say that I was so thirsty at the end that when we go back to camp, I drank it straight. Yeah. I, yeah. I, and I, I, the <laughs> thing is, is like, I guess my brain wasn't working because yeah. I, yeah. I forgot <laughs> that it was bad water and oh, I just no. drank get so chunks? much of it. Oh, yeah. It tastes like pulp. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. It was pulpy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah never the next day, you just don't look at what you're drinking. Just close uh, your eyes yeah. and chug. Uh, that's a good story, Mike. I forgot about that yeah. one. That was, I mean, honestly, that was probably one of the most stressful situations I mean, I've been in, for sure. Yeah, that for sure. Was... Just carrying that much weight that long ways and getting in that mindset of, all right, we have to get this done. Yeah. You know, as a provider for the group, as trying to be a leader here, every, like the group needs this. So yeah. just getting in that, no matter what it takes, we're just going to accomplish this. Even if it takes us all night, even if it takes us two minutes at a time, yeah. we're still going to get it done. And the fact that you volunteered to do it too, because yeah, it was yeah, like, we could have yeah. said, hey, let's let somebody else take right. care of this. Or send only two people, send yeah. only three people, but yeah. four of us took the task. Got it done. Got it done. Man. Yeah. That sucks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but also, it was pretty fun. Yes. Also, one, yes. I mean, when we were finished, it's type I can two say fun. it's fun. It's yeah. type yeah. two fun, which is the kind of fun that's only fun in hindsight. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's right. But um, that's another mentality you got to have. It just brought me back to it is embrace the suck. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes yeah, I'm sure you, gotta, you know all about sometimes that. Sometimes you got to embrace the suck, guys. Because like we said, adversity brings people together. Sometimes the suck brings people together. Yeah. Because... We started out walking up the canyon with three people, and then a fourth Good Samaritan from the group hiked yes, all really. the way a down. A beautiful sight. Yeah, a hiked beautiful all sight. the way down to come help us. And when he rounded the corner and we saw him, we all just. I was. Yeah, yeah. We praised that yeah. guy. We wow. were like, oh my gosh, thank you That's so much. Beautiful. Our packs only have to be 70 or 60 yeah, pounds so now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we. Because we wouldn't have made it. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think we would have. Yeah. We wouldn't have made it. So he came down, and I mean, yeah, it brought us together for sure. It brought us together. Man. So you know, you can take a bad situation, and you can, you know, make you know, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade, right? Even if it still tastes bad, yeah. <laughs> pretend you like it. Yep. Yeah. That was good. That was Holy good. Cow. 
What is, um, so a lot of people when they're, are, are scared of the outdoors, you know, are fearful mm-hmm. of the outdoors. So what is a situation where you felt an intense fear being outside or mm-hmm. in, in an outdoor environment or in just everyday life? And how did you overcome those feelings? Hmm. Um, I had, I had a couple and they were both in Yosemite. So the first one was probably with rock climbing. Almost every time I went rock climbing, I was yeah. like, this is going to suck. <laughs> because Katie loves rock climbing. Right. Like, it's a dream for her. She loves mm. it so much. And it, like, it got her through Yosemite, like, all the right. struggles. And for me, the rock climbing was the struggle. Like, I was enjoying Yosemite yeah. greatly. Yes. And then someone would be like, hey, you guys want to climbing? Yeah. And I'm like, I guess so. I can see the beauty from down here, guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because part of it was a fear of heights. But the majority of it was a fear of failure, you know, yeah. and a fear of failing in front of everybody. Yeah. And what like, if you fall? Exactly. Yeah. Because the falling wasn't even that scary to me. It was the looking weak in front of people, not right. already yeah. being good at this. Because being like an outdoorsy person, like people, I think, kind of are scared of being an outdoorsy person and making it's almost like going to the gym for the first time yeah. and getting that mm-hmm. membership. You know, you're going to be a little chunky right. and everything. Like, you're right. afraid to yeah. run in front and of everyone. And everyone else is looking so swole. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, why am I here? Yeah, it's like, I need to just go yeah. to the YMCA. Yes. <laughs> you know, yes. it's like, screw this membership yeah. and everything. And it can, I think it can feel a lot like that when you try and be an outdoorsy person. Yeah. And so here we are in Yosemite, both, like, inexperienced yeah. with rock climbing and we're trying to in front of a bunch of people that are really good at rock right. climbing. Yeah. Like these people have lived here in Yosemite for years now. Right. Right. You know, or they're coming from like Colorado or somewhere else, you know, where they do climbing all the time. Right. And so they're telling us, Oh yeah, you gotta do this finger gym and you gotta do this and you gotta <laughs> yeah, easy bro. Easy. Yeah. They're doing <laughs> just hold us, on, bro. They're telling us all this stuff. Oh yeah, put that in there and let's go to So all this stuff and we're spewing like spewing that okay. beta. Yeah. yeah, spewing tons of stuff. And people are like, you want beta? I'm like, what is that? <laughs> is that like a hook? Like, yeah. you know, like you Ish. Know, what is that? And uh, so we had a big learning curve. And yeah. so a big fear was all that. But one day, the, the most fearful moment came when me and my buddy were doing a three-pitch climb. And it's like one of the easiest climbs you could do in Yosemite. Mm-hmm. Um, at least like a multi-pitch one. It's one yeah. of the easiest. But for me, as a beginner, I was super freaked out about yeah. it. And so we get to this point where it's not, it's finally starting to get a little yeah. exposed. Wait, so for those who don't know, what is a three point uh, oh, okay. climb? So, so yeah, so if you go to like a climbing gym, you're going to like the top of the rope yeah. and then back down and that's like a pitch <laughs> essentially, yeah. you know? So you're just doing like, that's like almost one pitch. Yes. If yes. you were to keep going above that, mm-hmm. you know, if you were to like, now you have to start lead climbing yes. a lot more, you know, now you have to start right. putting in... All your tools and everything else So you're else making going it to up. a sort of ledge, yeah. a, play, a stopping point, and then you're resetting. Restarting. Exactly. So like if you're, you know, you obviously don't have enough rope right. to make it up. So it's up. a great distance. Yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. a very long distance you're going to make where you're going to have to bring your rope back up. Yeah. And then restart. Yeah. And then once you get to the top of whatever pitch you hit, you're going to not be able to like necessarily rappel down. You know, you're probably going to have to hike down mm-hmm. to wherever you started. And so that's what we're doing. And we're not going very high. Like, it's not mm. super high, but it's definitely high enough that we can't just rappel down off this thing or whatever. And so we're finally starting to get above the tree line, starting to get a little bit exposed. And there's this, like, big, like, bulge that I'm going to have to, like, knob, that I'm going to have to, like, <laughs> climb around and, like, yeah, yeah. stick my hand up over and, like, pull Ooh, myself, yes. like, yeah. do, like, weird body positions that I'm not used to. Right. You know? And I'm doing it, and I don't know how to use my legs very well at this point, or technique. And so, I can't see, like, Will, my buddy. Mm -hmm. He sucks at climbing, by the way. I can't see him. (laughs) He's, like, way up there. And I'm just like, Will, what do I do? And I'm like, pull, pull, like, pull the rope tighter. Let me fall. And he's like, all right. And he's like, dude. Just do it. Just do it. Send just, it. I'm just yeah. like... Have you tried climbing it yet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. And I'm like super weak. And I just give all my energy. I'm like... Yeah. Yes. And I just like pull myself up like I'm like Chris Sharma or something. <laughs> and I just like pull myself up this yes. thing. And it was the most draining feeling 
but it was also a feeling where I got over it and I was like, dude, that was amazing. Yeah. And then we get to the most exposed part, which is literally just a big slab with a single crack. Right. Like mm-hmm. going up it, no footholds at all. It's just crack. Yes. And so you're just like kind of going, and you're going sideways up it. Yeah. And I'm like, Liz, can we just like walk down? And he's like, no, we can't walk down. This is like the best part. <laughs> and so that was definitely one of those moments where I finally did that. I like got to the top and it was definitely the most like enjoyable experience because you got this amazing view of Half Dome, of yeah. like the whole valley and everything. And it was super beautiful. And then once I did that, I started to realize like, oh, I was not experiencing Yosemite before. Hmm. When I was just down in the valley, when I was safe, whenever I'm just kicking back on a tree, yeah. I'm not really experiencing the wilderness. I'm not experiencing the outdoors. It's not the same. Like once I got into it with the outdoors, once I got like intimate with the outdoors, yeah. yes. we started wrestling and fighting with each yes. other, you know, and like yelling. That skin on rock. That's yeah, right. skin on rock. I'm like <laughs> cursing at the rock. I'm yes. cursing at nature. Right. And then finally nature, it's like despite all the cursing and anger I had towards it, it presents me this like beautiful moment with it yeah. and said like, you deserved this now. Huh. And it was a beautiful moment where I realized, okay, climbing's still going to (laughs) suck. Like, it's still going to be hard. And doing all this stuff is going to be really hard, but it's going to be, like, super rewarding with this relationship. Dude, that's a great story. I like that. Yeah. I love that because I feel like, you know, when we think about outdoor recreation, we think it's just, it's fun all the time, you know? And while going out and doing outdoor recreation or going out to the woods, we do it because it's fun, yes, we also do it because it challenges us, you know? And I think that, you know, that's that's part of becoming better is seeking out those challenges. Like we said, if you want to be resilient, seek out the resiliency challenges. If you want to be a leader, seek out the challenges to be a leader. And that's part of what going outside is. You know, it's not just going out there to have fun. It's going out there to, to challenge yourself. Because, you know, there's a lot of people who say, I don't want to go camping because I know that it's less comfortable than being at the house. And yeah. you're like... Yes, that's the that's the point. Yeah, it's like you know we're not going out there just to have fun. We're going out there to, to actually challenge ourselves to do something that is uncomfortable because we know that when we're done with it, we're gonna have a better appreciation for when we come back mm-hmm. the things that we do value and are, and are comfortable. And we're also yeah. going to hopefully come back stronger than we left. You know? Yeah, not only that, the more you do it, the, like you said, the more yeah. comfortable you get with it. Yes. And in turn, the more comfortable you become with the whole situation. It becomes Absolutely. more of a glamping scenario where you can know yes. what you're doing. You get there and you just <laughs> set it all up and have your cozy stuff on your tent and you're Chill all set. Yeah. You know what to do. Absolutely. But yeah, that first time can be intimidating Absolutely. for sure. And you know, and even when you're, you're super cozy camping and you're like, man, I'm comfortable out here in nature, you're still seeking stuff to challenge yeah. you because like when i'm right. out there glamping i'll be like all right hey what can i climb yeah you know yeah, i'm trying yeah. to find a boulder hopefully spot. You're still out in the middle of nowhere yeah. Too. yeah right yeah or okay well next time i'm gonna set my camp out further or next yeah. time i'm gonna try and find a new campsite you know where i yeah. haven't found one before and it's like it's, you always want more. people always want more yeah people always want more you always want to push yourself a little bit harder that's what you want to try and do at least mm-hmm. yeah what about you mike any major fears that you had to overcome i mean I, climbing is a great place to talk about yeah, fear it honestly <laughs> it's yeah. um so i think i was the most afraid before i had taken my uh, first whipper of course yes mm. and that's that's a <laughs> yeah. terrifying thought of like okay yeah. am i really just gonna <laughs> fall off this cliff and hopefully this little rope holds <laughs> me and i don't swing in anything and it's just a terrifying situation right and before then, you know, it's always in the background, like, oh, what am I going to fall? It's going to happen right. eventually. I can't climb this perfect forever. Right. You know? <laughs> I can't just top rope the rest of my life either. You know? Right. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, kind of going on my first, like, probably the hardest lead climb I've tried. It was either a 5A, 5'9". You know, nothing too hard. Obviously. I mean, I wasn't that right. not the best climber ever. But, you know, it was hard for me. And so I'm going up there, and, of course, I'm at the point... The most stressful point in any climb, at least for in my eyes, is you're clipping into the next bolt, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. So you're as high as you can above the bolt you've already clipped into, and you're taking out more rope. You're like, in your back of your mind, like, if I fall right now, I have so much rope it's gonna in the system. It's going to be a long way. Yeah. I'm going to fall <laughs> in my Yeah. And of course, that, that's where my foot slips. Yep. Of course yeah. it is. And so I, I take this giant tumble, and I slam into the wall. And, you know, my adrenaline's going, so I don't feel, like, super painful, but I know I hit my leg, and I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I, this must be, I, my leg is obviously broken, you know? A, a min- initial thought has to be the worst, you know? 
there's got to be blood gushing everywhere. And I looked down. <laughs> right. And, you know, in my, like, heightened state, I was like, I saw a little bit of blood, and I was like, oh, God, no. <laughs> no, it's all happening. This is the worst. And then, you know, oh, I, flashes I sit there, eyes. you know, just, like, hyperventilating on the rope for a little bit, and, like... I'm alive, you know? Yeah. And then I'm like, my leg doesn't even hurt that bad anymore. I'm like, okay. And everyone at the bottom's like, are you okay? Are you okay? I'm like, because I was freaking out the whole time. I was. And I was like, oh, man, I shouldn't have freaked out. I feel like such a pants, you know? Like, they're like, are you finish the climb? I was like, oh, yeah, I'll finish the climb. No worries, no worries. Uh-huh. And I eventually finally finish it, and I come back down, and they're like, are you okay? Like, it sounded like you really hurt yourself. And I was like, oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. At this point, like, the cut on my leg is so tiny. Like, yeah. it's the smallest scrape ever. So I have, like, my sock, like, pulled up covering it. I was like, I don't want to show. I'm like, oh, it's fine, guys. No worries. No worries. <laughs> and I eventually, you know, they, you know, they won't leave me alone. Yeah. So I pulled out my sock. And it's like this tiny, tiny little cut. And they're like, wow. <laughs> what were you freaking out about? Like, are you serious? This is like, you're yeah. not even bleeding at all. Yeah. Like, Marie would not leave you alone. She would not leave. It's her favorite story. You should <laughs> that ask her is her favorite time. story. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm sure she makes me seem a lot. Uh, I'm sure she a does. lot worse. But I'm sure she does. Yes. I mean, I, again, I, I, that's the truth, though. That yeah, was it, was the truth. That's it was the truth. It was the truth. And I was scared. Okay, it was my first <laughs> fall ever. It was super high. Okay, I was scared. It was pretty high. Yeah, I'm gonna lie, it was super high. But I mean, that's after that, way. after going through that, and I yeah. knowing like if that's the furthest fall I'm probably gonna take, and yeah. I survived yeah. that, and it wasn't even hurt really <laughs> right. at all. Yeah. I mean, after that, having that confidence to yeah. you know not be worried about falling because I think that's. In climbing, that's huge. If you're thinking about your, you're gonna fall. You're probably gonna fall. Like you're not mm-hmm. focused on anything exactly. Else. You're not yeah. focused on going up the wall where your hands and feet are gonna go and like the most solid points. But totally. So I think going through that and going through that extremely such stressful situation in my mind, yeah, definitely helped me out to be me- more mentally tough later on. Yeah, for sure. It's for almost sure. good. Like we would have a lot of moments where I remember when we first started climbing out there, they would like our first climb up. They'd be like, "All right." You're high enough up now, just fall. Yeah. You know, like they would tell you to just purposefully fall. For that sure. way you get the experience of it. You know, because that really is what freaks people out the most is that yeah. fear of the thing holding in. Yeah. Sometimes in Yosemite, it would be so scary if you're like leading it because you're yeah. putting it in one of those cans yeah. into the crack and you're hoping that yeah. you put it in. <laughs> That's right. right. That's Instead right. of yeah. just like a bolt, you're hoping like, yeah, I think this is good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Track climbing is a whole nother monster. Yeah, yeah it is. Especially with fear wise, if you're sure. placing your own protection, you're yeah. completely and totally responsible for if you die. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> especially like... if you're setting up for like another pitch, uh, you yeah. know, and you're having yeah. to put things into like the cams into the wall and everything and you're like this will hold me <laughs> yeah <laughs> for sure oh, yeah yeah that's rough man that's mm-hmm. rough i got really scared yeah what about you? a couple weeks ago when i was doing a land navigation course where they give you a sheet of paper with coordinates on it mm. and you plot the coordinate points on your map and then you have to find them so is this certain, for the army yeah in a certain amount okay. of time and so it's like a test. And so I had to get a certain amount of points in order to, to pass the course. And so I was already very stressed because I get really stressed in those situations where it's like a pass-fail kind of deal. Mm-hmm. And um, we were doing it at night. It was pitch black, sucked, you know, <laughs> alone. And we weren't allowed to use white light. So if we were going to use light, it had to be red light. We had to be in the prone, laying on the ground, and we had to use red light to look at your map, right? So you go out there, you have a map, a compass, and a protractor, and you kind of shoot distance, direction, and then wander, right? This course had not been maintained ever, <laughs> and it was just Perfect. an enormous briar patch, an enormous briar patch. Get some good bushwhacking. Oh, my God. And so it's, it's pitch black. Clouds have rolled in. You know, it's a cloudy night. There's, like, no stars. I'm walking through tall grass, you know, that's, like, above my head. So there's no way. There's no way <laughs> that I'm going to find these points because you can't see more than five feet in front of you. And so I'm just, like, looking at my compass. I'm like, all right, well, I'm just going to, you know, go through the motions and <laughs> walk around out here. And so one of my points is close to a lake. So I'm like, all right, if I can terrain associate to the lake, I hopefully I can find it from there. So, you know, I'm walking to the lake, and I... Uh, I follow a trail, get to the lake, and then I have to go off trail. And this is where it gets hairy. I'm like, I don't want to go off trail. Mm. Yeah, it's dark out there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, could it, be chupacabras out there. There could be all yeah. kinds of stuff. Yeah. You know, yeah, we just talked about scary stories last <laughs> week. They're all running through my mind. Yeah. You know, there's all kinds of shadow people out there. Yes. And so I'm, I'm like, all right, so here we go. And so I walk out to you know the pitch black tall grass woods, right? And I, I 
am walking around and literally every horror movie ever is going through my head and I'm getting yes. super wigged out. I'm like, I'm a soldier. <laughs> <laughs> I'm brave. <laughs> I can do this. But inside, I'm like, literally, I was scared. Like, guys, I was scared. <laughs> and so I'm like, walking through, like, no joke, several times I screamed because I fell in a hole that came out of nowhere. And I thought, you know... Falling into a different dimension. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, because it's, it's, it's pitch black. I can't, like, iterate that enough. <laughs> that it's pitch black. And so I fall into a few holes. Eventually, I find the lake. Right? And the moon reflects off the lake, and it's serene. And I'm like, okay. And I found the lake. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. all right. And so I would try and walk around the lake. And so I'm like, okay, this looks like a flat spot of ground where it's not going to be briar bushes. And I step into it and immediately sink into the mud up to my knee. No. I'm like, all right. <laughs> Water pours into my boots. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, suction cut my boots out of the mud and then crawl into the briar patch. And, and you know, those uniforms are tough, but literally the thorns pierce them easily. Yeah. And so I'm getting stuck everywhere. I'm bleeding. I'm like, this is the worst night of my life. I'm like, this sucks. I'm I am seriously about to just get back on the trail, go back to the start and just be like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I quit. And so I'm walking around out there and, and I'm not finding the point. And I'm getting so frustrated because I'm like, I went through miles, probably not miles, but I went, you know, I went a long <laughs> <Yeah>. ways <laughs> through thorn bushes. And I'm scraped, I'm breathing, I'm wet, I'm scared, and I cannot find this point. And I was like, I tried so hard to find this point, I couldn't find it. And so I was like, all right, you know, I had to, I was, we were running out of time. I was like, I can't, I can't find this point. I gotta at least go for another one. So I'm finding, I, you know, I quickly route another one on the map, and I'm about to head out. And right when I turn my red light off and I'm about to head out, I hear no joke guys like 10 coyotes. Oh my God. No. All start howling, all start barking and stuff, and they're like, I don't know how far away from me, but it sounded pretty close. <laughs> yeah. And also, no joke, they were in the direction I was supposed to walk to go to this uh, next point. Of course. And I was like, no. <laughs> it's like, not this, happening. This, how could things get worse? I was like, because I'm already, I'm basically a wounded animal, guys. Yeah. I'm basically a wounded animal. Do you have animal. any sort of protection? Nothing. Zero I had things. Nothing. I didn't, have my, I didn't have a knife. I had nothing. Oh, no. It was just wow. a protractor, a compass, a map. And then just me in wet boots. And I was like, okay, well, this is how I die. Yeah. And I was like, uh, uh, I had, okay, so I had, like, a locator on me. Because for these things, when you're going solo at night, they put locators on you. Because they know that some dummy's going to wander off, you right. know, off course and into traffic or something. And they got to go scoop his dead body off the pavement later. Right. And so I had that. So I'm like, at least they'll find my body. And... So I start walking in towards pieces. where I'm supposed to go, and I'm just, like, praying. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, God, please don't let me be eaten by coyotes. I'm like, I know that's probably not going to happen, but who knows? First time for everything, right? Yeah, who yeah. knows? Like, it's dark outside. We just talked about scary stories. Right, I'm yeah. thinking a coyote could probably take me out. Yeah, it could have been a bunch <laughs> I'm of scary. skinwalkers. Who, yeah, who knows? It could have been, <laughs> been. And so I'm walking out there, and I find a trail. I'm like, okay, this is the trail I'm supposed to find. The coyotes are still howling over there, and so I start running, you know, and I'm running, and and I'm like, I'm just getting so frustrated, and I decide, like, in that moment, I, I made a decision. I was like, I can either use the... I'm not going to stop being frustrated, because I can't force myself to stop being angry at the situation, but I can either, you know, sulk in it, or I can use that anger to fire me up. And mm. so I was like, okay, I'm going to be mad angry, but I'm going to do this. And so I start running faster, and I find the point, right? Nice. I find this one point, and I write it down, and and everything. Okay, now the next point, and I end up finding just enough points and just the right amount of time to make it back, and I'm okay. And you know, when I look back on the situation now, I'm like, that was one of the crappiest nights of my life. I was out there all night. It was wet. It was cold. Coyotes chasing me. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it was terrible. But I, I think that you know, I'm glad that I didn't give up. Yeah. You yeah. know, I'm glad that that. I could use the frustration to try and make myself go a little bit harder and, and do the tasks that I needed to do. Right. And, you know, focus not so much on the feelings and the focus not so much on the circumstances, but focus more on the task at hand. Yeah. And I think that's kind of what I learned from that is that when you have a job to do, that's what you have. Their first priority has to be yeah. is getting the job done and not thinking about the circumstances. But it really yeah. sucked and I was very scared. Well, I mean, like, what was in the moments where you were like about to give up? Yeah. What were you telling yourself? To get you to keep going? Uh, it's really good. I think that it was all values for me because I valued completing the task 
more than I valued not completing the task yeah. than being comfortable yeah. in that moment. You know, and I was willing to sacrifice a night of comfort in, in order to get a go, yeah. you know, on that activity because I wanted to, I wanted the go. And so, you know, it, I had to find something outside of the current circumstance to work towards to get my mind off of it and to value more because I couldn't find anything inside the circumstance to value more than getting out. If that makes sense, yeah. you know, so whether that is if you're out there rock climbing and you don't want to get to the top for the sake of getting the top, you have to find something outside of that circumstance to work towards. Yeah. I want to get to the top because I want to be braver, you know, and then work for that. Or yeah. you know, I want to get to the top because I want to take a photo, yeah. <laughs> you know, or something like that. And then, cool. you know, you get up there. And I think having just like an awareness of what's going on yeah. in that moment can really help because you can ask yourself like, all right, Keegan. Like, what am I really feeling right now? Yeah. I'm feeling wet. Yeah. I'm feeling yeah. tired. Like, some of these things, is this really all that bad? Right. You know, is this really worth giving up all of this? Yeah. Yes. Like, is this really worth yes. stopping? When I'm on that rock wall and my hands are hurting, it's like, all right, Nick, what's really happening right now? Are your fingers falling off? Can mm -hmm. you actually not yes. make it up this thing? Like, no, you can make it up. Your legs are fine. Your fingers are fine. Mm -hmm. Like, you're just freaked out. You're just going crazy right now you also have to be very honest with yourself about what you can and can't control because i can't make it warmer i couldn't make it lighter i couldn't make coyotes go away yeah but what i could control is how i reacted to it yeah you know and so what i could control was to keep going or not to keep going and and i had to take control of that you know so instead of fussing about the stuff i couldn't change i had to really focus on the things that i could yeah. keep control of and could change and really and really focus on that and that's easier said than done obviously oh yeah of course but, but again you gotta practice it yeah that's that practicing yeah. resiliency yeah and For eventually sure. you get like better at it yeah. you just keep getting yeah. better still never want to go back to that course <laughs> yeah still never want to go back there it was a terrible place yeah well i mean that initial backpacking week that i did in my undergrad it was like the worst but also <laughs> coolest week you know that i had had up to that moment like, it sucked really bad. I was crying almost every night. Yep. Because how hard it was. Yeah. You know, like, one night we woke up to rain pouring inside of our tarps and Ugh. soaking our sleeping bags. Yep. Ugh. We got yeah. a late start the next morning. Yeah. <laughs> we had to build fires Been and, there. like, hover, like, our bags over everything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that stuff sucks. Yeah. It's so bad. Yeah. But, like, the whole time we're, like, warming up our sleeping bags, we're also, like, laughing. Yeah, exactly. You know, and it gets you through it. Do you remember that night... The last night that we were in Arizona at the Grand Canyon, and it poured rain, and we had accidentally built our tent in a wash. Yes. Mm -hmm. And all How the rain, and all yeah. the rain washed through our tent. Yeah. And my sleeping pad is an inflatable sleeping pad. It became a pool floating. <laughs> yes. And I was floating on yeah, top. We of, were wrapped it yeah, up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was floating on top of this water as a, as the literal river ran yes. through our tent. But everything it worse. soaked. It was yours was yeah. at the lowest oh. point. Yeah, mine was at the lowest point. Yeah. So literally everything was soaked. And this is a situation where I did not react well. <laughs> I immediately it broke me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it was, was funny because me and Ramona are on the other side kind of driver like Keegan, come on, bro, just, it's okay. It's yeah. not that bad. And meanwhile, you're just completely soaked with water. Yeah. <laughs> and we're like, and we're like, I'll just suck it up, dude. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> they're trying to they're trying yeah. to encourage me yeah. and be like, dude, you're okay. And I was like, I'm not okay. <laughs> Things are okay. I was yeah. like, I'm freezing. It's cold. It's like, yeah. wet. The yeah. water is not stopping. It's yeah. pouring rain. And so, like, it, it got so bad that I just had left. Yeah. I left. I got up and I just walked out into the night. Yeah. <laughs> I walked oh into the night. I took yeah. all my clothes off. I walked. Yeah. I took all my clothes yeah. off and I walked naked <laughs> out into oh, the rain. Oh, he was furious. Oh. We were just sitting there and he's like, guys, I'm, I'm leaving. We're like, we're like what? Is it, I'm going out there. We're like, Keegan, don't go out there. He's like, I'm going. We're like, no, don't go. And he's like, I'm, he just strips naked and just runs out into the darkness. Right. Just take all my clothes off, put my yeah. headlamp on, and just go out into the night. I, I grab, I grab a cook stove, a cook stove with yes. some gas, and I find a rock shelter overhang. No way. And I get under the rock shelter, out of the rain, butt naked. Yeah. And I start the cook stove, and I put it between my legs. And I start the fire, and I just get over top of it and try to warm myself up. I stayed there for like five hours. That's true. <laughs> but like, like an hour in, Mike and Ramon came over, and yeah. then they we found were, me. We were in there, we're like, can we really just leave our, our dude right. out there by himself, soaking wet, naked, in the uh -huh. dark, in the rain? We're like, we can't yeah. do that to him. Yeah. We gotta be out there. Yeah. And so we eventually got there. We found this hobo of a man underneath <laughs> this underneath this tiny little like it's not big at all. It's like 
maybe three, four yeah. feet of like just enough for all three of us barely to we fit. Barely under, fit, yeah. To all the stay sort yeah. of dry, and we're yeah. like roasting our socks over yeah. the over the cook stove. We put our socks. Over made some oatmeal. Socks, yeah. We we made our, some oatmeal. We tried to get some hilarious. calories in us, warm us up. Put our soggy wet socks on sticks and put them over top of the fire. Try yeah. to get them to dry. It didn't work. Wow. <laughs> Miss whole night. Yeah, you're just terrible. naked the whole time. But you know what? When, <laughs> when that morning came. And you could so feel, glorious. you could feel like, oh man, it's only gonna get warmer. Oh, yeah. it's only gonna get warmer every yeah. hour. Another degree it went up. Yeah. And the rain <laughs> stopped, and the sun came up. It was amazing. I just wish yeah. like a family would have been hiking through. Yeah. <laughs> I've just seen you three yeah, like. Laying there. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. The place we were though, nobody goes. Yeah. Yeah. It was it's pretty empty. It was desolate. It was desolate. That was great, though. It was a good yeah, time. I look back on that's type two fun right there. It was. It was. <laughs> it's fun in hindsight. Like, I'm glad glad that we experienced yeah. that. It was super nice because that was our last night, too. And yeah. We were just like, all right, throw all our wet stuff in this pack and get the heck out of here as fast as possible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We stopped at a diner on the way home from there. Oh, my. And I ate. Smashed some grease. <laughs> this the most greasy like food a you double would, patty yeah. cheeseburger uh-huh. mozzarella sticks cheese fries mm-hmm. and taquitos patty. for some reason were yeah. there <laughs> so yeah, hot dogs we, uh, some, corn dogs some sort yeah. of mexican food wow. they had literally everything they just knew uh, milkshakes uh-huh. yeah we had we ate, we ate it all we ate everything it was glorious yeah, yeah it was amazing and never... true. there's nothing better than that yeah. first meal back into civilization yeah just anything is going to taste so good that's glorious it was a great time it was a great time well, guys, we're hitting the hour mark almost. Yeah. I think it's yeah, about we are. time to start wrapping this up. Sweet. Um, concluding thoughts about the mentality of an outdoors person mm-hmm. built up from experiences. Yeah. If I could kind of wrap up a lot of what we've all said, <clears throat> one thing that I, you know, obviously there's tons of things that an outdoors man, woman, person being should be. Yeah. And, but I think one is just community, you know, For sure. it's keeping that community mindset intact. It's thinking of the person alongside of you and with you and mm-hmm. not just yourself, you know, like obviously the, when you guys went to go get the jugs of water, you know, to take back up, you were thinking of others. When the person came down to help you, you know, they were thinking of you guys and everyone else. Like, yeah. you were thinking of Keegan when he ran off naked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? It's like all these things. Like, you just got to think of each other. And because you're stronger when you're together. And it makes mm-hmm. the experiences a lot more fun when you're it's together. True. You know? So I think as long as you can keep that community-oriented idea intact, I think that you can be an outdoors person. Um, if you find an outdoors person that's a loner, there's something wrong with them. <laughs> you know, like, there's something yeah. weird about I'm them. going off the grid forever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Doomsday prepper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's something else going on there. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I think community is a huge part of being outside. You know, it brings us together. Yeah. Adversity brings people together. It's team building. It's leadership. Yeah. It's everything. I like that. Yeah, I don't think I could agree more. But also, I think... Another side aspect of the mentality out there is just being ready to have anything happen and be okay with that. Like being okay with having a wild experience. Like that's yeah. the only reason we got these stories. Is we yeah. were willing to go out there and say, you know what, whatever happens, we're going to roll with it. <laughs> right. We're going to make the most of it right. and have as much fun as possible. And I think just having that mental state of going after it and hoping for the best and mm-hmm. planning, planning for the best yeah. and then dealing with whatever you're, you're handed. Yeah. Yeah. For no, sure. I think that's perfect. Yeah. And I think that, you know, like we said, you have to train yourself to have these mentalities. It's yeah. not something that happens overnight and, you know, give yourself grace when you make mistakes and you don't, you don't like what you see in yourself because you're not always going to like what you see in yourself. And the mm-hmm. outs, you know, the outdoors and outdoor recreation and stressful situations, they really bring that out. You know, true. they reveal our true selves and sometimes we don't like what we see, but that's okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, because we can grow and change and transform and we should always be trying to do those things. Yeah. And, you know, to go back to the beginning of the show when we were talking about, you know, I want to say discipline, we were talking yeah. about, you know, planning and discipline and all that mm-hmm. stuff, taking that to the outdoors. I think that forming a mentality is a discipline, and, you know, and that discipline frees you. Mm. 
So, you know, if you want to be a braver person, then you have to have the discipline of making the small choices to be brave every day in the yeah. small things, whether it's being brave enough to wake up five minutes earlier than you usually mm-hmm. do or being brave enough to speak up when you normally wouldn't, you know, those small disciplines free you to be brave later on, you know, or to be resilient later on. If you're going to train yourself in resiliency, start in the small things, be resilient in everyday life train yourself to be disciplined in that training and then when the time comes for you to really be resilient you have a, you know a much less to go you know yeah. it's, a, it's a smaller step you'll be so take. much more prepared you're more prepared exactly that's what i'm trying to say you'd be more prepared to take that step than you would if you just jumped head first in you know so which isn't a bad option either no and it's not <laughs> yeah, necessarily yeah. a bad option because if you fail you learn from it if you yeah. succeed you learn yeah. from it you know but i think that having a good mentality is a discipline and it's something that you should try and train every day. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. One hundred percent agree, guys. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for showing up, you guys. Yeah. Love you guys. Wonderful time. Yeah. yeah Had fun too. Of Had course, fun. we have more stories. Even <clears throat> we didn't talk about uh, so many other trips that we went on, but we'll yeah. save those for next time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll talk about other stuff. Um, but for now, I guess that's a wrap. It's a wrap. That's a wrap. <laughs>